What? What the hell is this? Who are you? Hey, Ma! I'm home! A few days ago, Fortress Films posted their long-awaited SFM project, Emesis Blue, and it's honestly one of the best SFMs I've seen in years. It has a storytelling style of analog horror and puts it into a feature film-length animation with incredible cinematography and lighting. So if you have some spare time, well, um, okay, a lot of time, I highly recommend you to watch it, and if you don't, well, spoil alert. It starts on Halloween night in the 60s and follows medic Ludwig Fritz and two private investigators, the detective and soldier, and also follows the kidnapping of a local governor, even though he himself doesn't know about it. Medic is in his office when he's woken up from a hallucination by Scout, who's apparently Germa, and comes in to talk about his teeth falling out, which is similar to what happens to Medic at the end of the film. He does a checkup on him and prescribes diazepine for his hallucination. After the checkup, a pile of tapes are knocked over. Among them are titles such as The King in Yellow, which is supposed to cause madness to those who read it, and The Smiling Face. Scout picks up M by Fritz Lang and watches it back home with his mother when he suddenly gets a call, replaying his earlier conversation with Medic in the car, about the other people affected by the respawn machine's glitches. Then comes the first big jump scare of the film. A whistle tune of In the Hall of the Mountain King plays before Scout's mom's head peeks out from the kitchen, before falling with a dull thud. A masked man nearby watches it take place. An undetermined time later, Medic comes into the house to find a decapitated friend and the disappearance of Scout, leading him to pass out and mysteriously wake up in his office. So far, it seems to signify Medic being the one who killed and stalked Scout and his mom, from how the killer holds up his mom's head akin to how Medic held up Pyro's head in a way to tease his victim. I don't know, man. For context, M is a German suspense thriller about a child murderer on the loose who is being hunted by the Berlin police and criminals because of how heinous his crimes were. In the scene where Medic enters the home, a clip is played in the background of the murderer in M claiming he didn't know the child. Throughout the SFM, Scout is referred to a child or a boy, even though he's like 20 oh my god, no wonder spies got grey hairs here. This reminds me, while this is all happening, Detective and Soldier are hunting down on a lead on the kidnapping of the governor, Jules Archibald, in which they have a close brush with death. It leads them to Scout's house, with a giant M drawn on the wall, and they find his file, which says that whatever happened with the respawn machine caused his brain to atrophy and ultimately let go by blue. In the file, it also states Medic's name, leading them to chase down the doctor. The drawing of M was a turning point in the German film, in which a blind man draws it on the killer after identifying him by his whistle tune. This could also be another hint to Medic being a murderer, but I don't know. Both groups end up at the Conaher Slaughterhouse, a nod to NG's real name, which is a lookalike to the True Fort map in TF2. Medic finds a room with a coffin and random stuff, until a baseball falls to the ground. It clicks in his head that Scout is trapped in the coffin, and unlocks it to save him. Instead, he runs away, calling him a SICK BASTARD! However, this freedom short-lived, being almost immediately caught by Blue and Red NG and tortured by them. This seems out of character for the engineer, being seen as one of the only mercenaries who isn't crazy or unhinged, making the scene even more unnerving. Medic proceeds to get shot in the middle of trying to save Scout, but something peculiar happens. Yeah, this regeneration isn't explained anywhere in the film, but I've got some theories I'll get into later. Medic kills the engineer and this seems to signify the start of his madness, the mirror nearby showing his fractured mind. Downstairs in the sewers, the duo run into Sniper, who tried to kill them but ended up getting his leg shot off by Soldier. Immediately after, they're separated by Pyro, who wordlessly shoots and kidnaps the spy. This is where the weirdness starts as if it wasn't weird already, but Soldier bumps into a shadowed figure talking to someone else. He tries to shoo them off with Gordon Freeman's favorite weapon, but suddenly gets startled by a fucked up version of the scout before being sent into a war flashback. Now this feels out of place because according to the TF2 comics, Soldier was never in the war. Once back to reality, 
He bumps into the red demo, missing an entire arm but not bothered by it. He looks over and sees a shadow man, who tries to shoo him off and... Wait a minute. That's himself. This is one of the many loops that seem to happen. Soldier throwing a crowbar at himself, medic pushing over the box of films in his office and more. This would also explain why Jules Archibald didn't know that he was kidnapped. Soldier is then jump scared by Botch Scout and attempts to fight it off in a terrifying chase. Once killed, its lifeless body is kicked down the stairs, disappearing into black as if the animators didn't want us to know if it was real or a hallucination. Soldier and Demo work together to get weapons and encounters more zombie-like creatures of the red team. Medic also bumps into the zombified red version of him. Fittingly, this chapter is named Crossroads where Medic, Demo, and Soldier all bump into each other. A jacked up heavy is introduced with a Hannibal-esque mask and the trio does their best to fend him off, escaping into an elevator. Once safe, Medic cries, Soldier and Demo solemnly understanding what's going through his head before going into an amazing shot. <laughs> Everything about this shows the characters in detail. Medic descending into madness just like the elevator, Demo nervously bouncing his leg at the maniacal laughter, and Soldier joining in with Medic before dropping his facade and looking at Demo with his real thoughts. Caution. The next chapter it shows Spy's background, working as the governor's goon. He's helped by Pyro who does nothing other than show his face, burned and disfigured. Pyro gets a call later from Sniper, and while distracted, Spy manages to free himself and escape the room, and in a sick twist of fate, he accidentally sets himself on fire, his body burning before hitting the water. The elevator comes to a halting stop. Demo and Soldier get off and the latter asks Medic about the Connor brothers, to which he said he killed them all. Soldier responds, Who gave you that order? This shows his mindset of always following orders, which will be important later on. Medic is also holding onto a briefcase belonging to the heavy. Just putting that out there. Demo and Soldier pass by holding cells with the words kill me and god health mir. Something Medic also god whispers at the me. end, translating to god help me. They find Jules Archibald who's not very pleased with being captured and while sorting out details, Demo wanders off into a laboratory, which he mistakes for a bar. That alcoholic. He's transported to an actual bar with one of the Connor brothers, Del, who is apparently miles away. A quick glitch causes Del to have a bloody nose and starts to give context of what is happening. When they figured out how to bring us back, some of us would tell stories about what we saw on the other side. We saw old friends, family. Mostly strangers. I spoke to my grandfather. He's been dead for 30 years. What'd he tell you? It's eternity in there. Apparently, the respawn machine seems to hold some kind of purgatory for those waiting respawn, which may feel like eternity and being longer than you think, something hinted at throughout the film. Merrick finds himself at a respawn terminal, and images of Scout, his beloved friend, haunts him. The command terminal fires up and warns of a corrupted file, asking whether to proceed. He clicks yes. The machine works to life, rebuilding everything down to the DNA structure before spitting out an error. Entity unknown. Soldier is transported to the command room and overhears Jules Archibald contacting Redmond and Blue Tark Man, the heads of Red and Blue respectively, about the respawn machine in attempts to keep the war going. Only ten? Uh, hold on a moment. Oh. What the hell is going on? He shot himself? Oh, bloody hell. Just throw him in the pit with the others. Okay, well, Excuse me, nine. Nine mercenaries were able to respawn. The 10th Merc, who alt f could be the one we saw at the start of the film. Maybe he learned the truth and decided that 
purgatories better. Medic is once again in pain after respawning the entity. A base wall rolls towards him, which could be a nod to the entity being Jeremy, the same skull that we saw earlier, deformed and zombified due to the foul corruption. As Medic comes to the realization that he may have been the murderer, Pyro finds him and starts a chase, and after being burned by him, Medic decapitates him with a standing ovation from his hallucinations. Now, if you look carefully at the burn scar, you can see the shape of an M, similar to the movie. Soldier, on the other hand, enters the laboratory, following demo steps only to find him frozen to death between multiple cryogenic tubes containing himself. I want to point out that even though they were supposedly strangers, once Soldier found out about Demo's demise, he seems to be hurt. Maybe as a nod to Blue Soldier and Red Demo being friends in the war update. His grief is then cut short by Heavy and Sniper. While escaping, he finds a film from Archibald to the Mercs and photos showing the different trials and versions of himself. Archibald seems to have escaped, or this is maybe a loop of him talking about how he's not kidnapped. However, he wants to disappear for a while and thinks that the Valium he's taking is actually something else. Later in the end, we and Medic find out that the Valium, which is diazepam, belongs to a company called Emesis. We've seen Medic give this out to Scout, himself, and Soldier being prescribed it but deciding not to take it. Archibald is then found by the spy, face burned in a similar manner to Pyro, and shoots the governor. Back in the film room, Medic fights off the sniper through deception, before being knocked out by the spy. The scene closes with the next chapter, Carabasis. Now according to my very vast knowledge of Greek mythology, and, and definitely not Google, Carabasis seems to be talking about a hero's descent into the underworld, and in some cases, a fall or retreat of some kind. All of them are put into a room and play a round of Russian roulette, ending in Medic's death. Soldier is let go by Spy before he disappears, stating, I'll see you at the funeral. Soldier finishes the loop, showing us that he was the shadow man who spooked himself at the start of the film. Once he escapes too far, he removes his soldier hat as the building burns down. From that point onwards, as Soldier is interrogated, he seems to not follow orders anymore, like diverting from the script during the funeral. At this funeral, the Man Brothers are seen being close friends of Archibald and... <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Scout and... Why does he look like he walks at all of God? <laughs> okay, okay. Right before Soldier decides to kill Spy along with himself, being the only one that knows his secret, Medic comes back from the dead, killing Spy and sending everything to chaos, his face stuck in an unnatural way. Redman and Blue Talk are then killed by Soldier and Medic separately. They're transported to Medic in his workwear in an ambulance, reaching Dell's bar and going to the restroom. He finds out about his Valium and sees the murderous version of himself as an apparition. And then this. He had died in a crash, ended up in the respawn machine like everyone else, including Archibald and the Scout, who had come to their demise waiting to respawn. Next to him, the briefcase that we saw throughout this film slightly opened containing bodies or blood of some kind before fading to the respawn machine lit on fire with the unnamed character amongst the flames. Now the first theory is that the emesis diazepam is supposed to make the respawn method easier and have less errors. This would explain why Medic, Archibald and the other mercs could easily respawn without much difference in their appearance. Soldier and Scout were the only two who didn't take the medicine. Thus Soldier had to be cryogenically frozen and Scout turned into a zombified version of himself. This would also explain why Archibald was able to be in the respawn machine even though he isn't part of the 10 mercs who were respawn capable. On the other hand, it could also make respawning worse and have more faults. According to the file, we can see a fault only happens 1% of the time. However, every time Scout, Medic, 
sniper heavy or so on is seen after being technically killed they come back a little bit grayer stiffer and so on akin to the zombified version demo man could be a victim of the respawn machine's glitch because even though he lost his arm he didn't die from blood loss Archibald was also surprised about the Valium being from Emesis, a brand he himself had overseen and created from an earlier SFM made by Fortress Films. Next, the killer of Germa, I, I mean Scout. Through the whole SFM, it's hinted to be medic, through the writing of M on multiple walls and seeing himself kill Scout's mother. How he had held up the head was the same. However, in the end, we hear the whistling tune of In the Hall of the Mountain King again, synonymous with the murder in M. this time sung by Archibald earlier in one of soldier's hallucination we see the dead demo telling him a true enemy has yet to reveal himself the true enemy being Archibald the one behind the respawn machine and supporting emesis which is a weird name for a medication brand because it literally means vomit what how would why he could have been affected by the diazepam its side effect being hallucination and memory loss The way the head falls in the teaser is also similar to Scott's mom's head and even looks like her. Maybe she's a vital part of Emesis's creation. The weird thing is it seems like Archibald had nothing to do with the scalp. Jeremy seemed to have wanted to sue Blue for laying them off, but it still doesn't make sense because it's nothing compared to the wealth they had and even then according to his termination contract he couldn't do anything about it. We might have to wait a bit longer to try and see where this goes, but so far we just have to wait the cinematography is amazing the use of blue and red similar to the teams in the game red is usually used for hallucination shown when medic found scout the hook defying physics also scout's ball that he can be seen playing with at his house is on the table nearby blending into the scene once it starts rolling off and falling it gets highlighted in white as a hint to medic medic is shown in both red and blue showing his good and evilness Whenever he is alone thinking about what he has done, he is illuminated in blue. Medic's face is obscured by a shadow, only showing the evil side of him in this particular scene. Soldier and Spy are clearly in blue from the start. Near the end, when Spy's corruption comes to light, he is seen wearing black. Soldier always remains blue until the very, very end, where he takes off his hat and decides not to follow orders. This is where he wears neutral or black for the funeral. During the chase scene, it becomes gritty and staticky, akin to an old horror movie. Also, another nice touch is that Redmond and Blue Tark are illuminated by the opposite colors in the death scene. Okay, maybe I'm making this up in my head, but it's kind of nice that the medic smiles or well, tries to when Scout walks in. Kind of glad that he's alive, but maybe scared by the fact that he was the one who killed him, or maybe even as a callback to when he talked to Scout about getting someone stuck. realizing he may have sent him to that very fate because of scout's foul corruption and my favorite jeremy's face above a chessboard of blue and red a red queen king bishop and two rooks and one single blue pawn i think the red pieces are supposed to show everyone we've seen so far the brothers archibald the mercs soldier spy and medic and scout the pawn of the game now there are multiple things i haven't understood yet like what exactly was in the briefcase why spy himself didn't know his own police radar could receive and transmit the start of the loops and the whole emesis thing but hopefully you watching this has a better understanding of it and hey you can comment down below your own theories and i might do another video about it after more info comes up we'll just have to see